Wow, so here we are, part six of this six-part series on how to plan, launch, and optimize profitable Facebook ad campaigns. You know, I've shared so many strategies, best practice, principles to launching and optimizing your funnel and ads. And that's the one thing that I really wanted to get across because a lot of time people say, oh, my ads, my Facebook ads aren't profitable. When actually, you know what? It's a funnel issue because you could have the best Facebook ads, the best copy, the best, you know, kind of audiences with the best creatives. And if you're driving it to a crappy opt-in page or a crappy offer, or you've got no, you know, kind of a flow to your funnel, well, guess what? They're not gonna be profitable. Um, but you know what? A series like this would be, wouldn't be complete without a session dedicated to the latest and greatest hacks directly from the trenches. Uh, let's face it, this is probably the session you've been looking forward to from the start because no matter how effective creating a, a knockout offer is or you know how to draft kind of really attention grabbing copy, um, discovering the latest hacks is always going to be sexier. And it was one of my things with, with creating this, this series because you know, I, no matter how many ads you run and no matter how much experience, no matter how many clients you have, it's always good to connect into other people and to see what other people are doing. And that's really what I wanted to do in this is to just share with you what are some of the things that are working out there at the moment um, and what are some of the things that maybe aren't working that could have been working six to eight months ago and are not working now. Hi, I'm Michal O'Neill, and if you're an online course creator or membership site owner who's either A, about to launch Facebook ad campaign, B, has a Facebook ad campaign that's underperforming, or C, you have a Facebook ad campaign that's working really well and now you want to scale it, well, this series is for you. So in the first five um, modules or parts of this series, we are uncovering an approach you need to take to plan, launch, and manage a profitable Facebook ad campaign. Um, the first five sections, we looked at the key principles and approaches that you need to understand to get the best outcome when launching any campaign. And then in this final video in the series, we're looking at some of the big tactical what's working now tips. So no matter where you're looking at this, make sure to keep an eye out for the full series. Oh, and if you do find this useful, please do subscribe, like, and share this video. You know, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, tell your friends. Because if you are finding it useful, I would really appreciate your help in growing my community because the bigger the community gets, the more effort and energy I can put into producing and sharing free content like this, which you can use to grow your business, get your message into the world and create the life that you want. So no matter where you're looking at this video, make sure to like, share, and follow and subscribe to my profile for lots more um, on this topic and others. So down to business. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about here is um, about lookalikes and retargeting. Um, so one of the big things is, you know, people are always so excited and, you know, kind of so eager to get into interest-based and cold audiences and to convert cold audiences. Lookalikes and retargeting audiences will always outperform interest in cold audiences. It, it, there's absolutely unequivocal. And yes, iOS 14.5 is having an impact. Um, but no, it is not destroying Facebook ads. You know, and one of the big things is that I, I suppose there's a lot of misunderstanding about what iOS 14.5 does and the impact it is having. And basically, uh, what iOS 14.5 uh, is blocking the pixel from reporting and tracking and, you know, kind of putting people specifically into audiences for retargeting based on what, they've, what they do off Facebook. Now, the fact is, it's not blocking Facebook from tracking who's taking those actions. So Facebook actually still knows who is taking the actions on your website based on the pixel. It still, it, you know, kind of, it still knows who those people are. And definitely with things like, you know, the, the uh, conversions API, it's still able to do that. So your lookalike audiences are not gonna be impacted in the same way as your standard, uh, you know, kind of, as your standard retargeting audiences. And definitely if we use um, some programs that likes to say Zapier is one way of getting around it, where if you think about it, the pixel might block, you know, if somebody leaves Facebook, the, the pixel might be blocked from reporting what action they take on your opt-in page. But through the use of Zapier, you can be take from whatever service you use um, to for somebody to opt in, whether it's the likes of ClickFunnels or lead pages or whether you're using a WordPress-based WordPress solution and bringing it off into, you know, something like Infusionsoft or ActiveCamp, or Entreport, 
you can use Zapier to 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 tell Facebook who are the people who have opted in. Now that will work really well in kind of you know a, a for, from a number of perspectives. First of all, it will still it will make sure that your retargeting still works. It'll also give the option to build your lookalike audiences on 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 the re, on the kind of the people who've taken the action that you want on on your website. Um, but as well as that, it's going to be more accurate if from a reporting perspective within Facebook. Um, you know, and, and that's just on a side note, uh, it's not one of my main points or one of my, you know, kind of um, hacks here, but the one thing you need to make sure is you need to have now independent reporting systems outside of Facebook. So you need to take from all of your third party tools, tools either, you know, if you're just starting out, this is gonna be a manual process, or you could use one of the, you know, kind of Google Data Studio or one of the tools that aggregates all this data together. But when it comes to lookalike and retargeting, the most important thing is to start your audiences from day one. So even before you start running ads, you need to have a number of different audiences set up. I would always have your entire web traffic, so everybody who visits your website, I then would have you know, maybe a, a, another audience which d if visits I, and you could like you know the more speci uh, the more sophisticated which you get the that you get with this the better so you could have retargeting audiences based on people who visit specific pages or specific services or who are interested in specific products um, on your website you could retarget them with with uh, you know kind of lead magnet uh, or ads for lead magnet for that are opt-ins for that specific uh, type of audience yeah, then you could have you know another for blog visitors because what's this telling you? If somebody's been on your blog, that means they've engaged with your content. Now you can all make assumptions about their knowledge about you know the the problem, the 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 solution, your solution about where they are on their actual journey. And um, but then when it comes to make sure whenever you're running ads that you have you know your custom audiences set up for your landing page, for your opt-in page, for your thank you page, if you have upsell pages and down funnels that you have all those identified individually initially so that you can do it you know when you're only starting out with Facebook ads it's probably going to be hard to get enough volume I am through those to build really powerful lookalike audiences but if you don't start on day one you are going to find it you know kind of it, it, the, it, the old question is or the, the saying the best time to plant an oak tree was 20 years ago the next best time is today and um, so lookalike audiences they do tend to work based on audiences of a thousand and one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure I uh, give uh, so if you were to take and and through different tests this can be seen if you were to take you know the level at which somebody comes in and uh, how close they are to taking the action that you want them to take so let's say somebody the the first level uh, it might be on the Facebook ad itself so somebody that interacts with the ad right so that's one level of interaction then the next level might be somebody who clicks and visits your opt-in page. That's the next level. Now they're getting closer to the conversion point, which is maybe opting in for your lead magnet. So the audience of people who visit your opt-in page is better than the audience of people who interact with an ad. So that's fair enough. So then the next level might be somebody who clicks the opt-in button, who clicks to, to go through and register. Now, not all of those people are going to convert to the thank you page because some of them are just seeing what information they might want to put in. So the next best might be you know, something like a button click. Um, uh, and, and if you specify the, the button on the opt-in page, then the next level might be people who visit the thank you page of the lead magnet. So now we can see we have different levels. And obviously, you know, you're gonna, if, if the lookalike audiences work best on, on, on base audiences of at least a thousand people, it might take you a long time to get a thousand people opted into your lead magnet. So then you're gonna pick the one above that that is, 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 is most appropriate. But I would always test it. And um, because I have had results on audiences of even under a hundred where I had like 50 50, 60 people who took a certain action, created a one to a 5% lookalike audience, and it still worked better than the cold audiences or the interest-based audiences. But obviously you wanna replace those audiences um, over time with ones that are more accurate, and you will get better results the further down the funnel you get. So the closer to the ultimate conversion um, is the better the based audience. And the bigger source audiences will always outperform smaller. So, you know, really what you want to do is look to build volume in the higher level audiences and then move your audiences as they mature over time. So that's the first one. That's looking at, you know, lookalike audiences and retargeting. Focus, focus in on them heavily because they will give you the best results at all times.
Second thing is, bigger audiences are outperforming smaller audiences. Now this one is a little bit counterintuitive and this is one of the ones where we're early in play with this um, and it's slightly counterintuitive. So the old metric was that your your perfect audience size was you know somewhere in, in a region of 1.5 to 2 million people. And if you had you know multiple audiences that were, or if you had an audience that was maybe three, five, six, seven, ten 10 million, you'd split those up into smaller segments because that was kind of the optimum size. For ad sets, uh, for for ad set budget optimization, I have to add right. So when we so we'll come to that in in a minute. But now what I'm seeing is that you know audiences, the bigger the audience's size, the almost the better results they're getting. And what I found this in you know a number of campaigns with lookalike audiences, you know, under some ad accounts uh, um, where especially with established ad accounts. Where I've seen some quite interesting experiments with you know kind of ads run to almost zero targeting audiences, zero target audiences. What that means is like that you're basically just picking their you know an age range and a location, and that's it, and targeting. And if Facebook has enough data, it can actually make those audiences work. Um, but one of the things that is prompting me to say this is Facebook have recently made target expansion on audiences mandatory. In the up until oh, and like this is literally only uh, you know kind of three four weeks ago. So we're talking about here in October when this when this came in. Um, up until recently, you could pick and you could choose whether to switch target expansion on. So, you know, but now what Facebook have said is that they've actually found that with detailed targeting expansion on, um, especially for, you know, your, your um, especially in your interest groups, that it gets a 37% decrease in cost. So what they did analysis across everybody who turned it on, who didn't turn it on, and there's 37% decrease in cost. They found in website custom audiences, the lookalike expansion gave a 17.3% decrease. And with custom lists, so when you upload custom lists with a lookalike, that it, it, it decreased cost by 10.1%. So basically what this what they're saying here is you can set up your um, audiences and it will always keep your demographic you know your specific you know kind of interests or, or, or demographics or exclusions in mind so it will always respect those but within your interest or within your lookalike Basically what Facebook is doing in the background is it's spending X amount of money that you specify on each one of the ad sets that you have identified. But it's also siphoning off a little bit of money and spending it off over here on other places where it thinks potentially it could get um, good results for you. And then if it gets good results, then it kind of spends more and more money over here on the other audience. Now, the very interesting thing here is that Facebook have now made the target expansion. So there's the, the two types, the detailed target expansion and the lookalike expansion mandatory. So it feels that it can get much, much better results for you if you let it kind of do its own thing. And this really is, there's absolutely no question or doubt about it, that the Facebook AI is not in a position yet to run ads effectively for us so that we just upload the copy and it goes at it. But what I've said before is I have seen where ad accounts were especially dialed in, they had you know kind of they had in you know they were, had a good history in running ads, their ads were, were running very well, that they have been able to open it up with this as I say zero target uh, audiences. And um, so in your audience, so what does this mean for you? Well, in your audience, you know, especially when you're coming down and look at it, try and make your audiences as big as possible to give Facebook as much um, info as possible. Um, but always be testing. So, you know, do keep your tight, your tight audience as well. Test them against broader audiences. And especially with your lookalike audience, you know, most people intuit it. You just think that a 1%, like, so how lookalike audiences work are, let's say you've got a thank you page in on a, from a lead magnet. You ask, you build the audience of people who visit a thank you page, and then you ask Facebook to build you an audience of the 1% of the population of a specific country, like America or America and Canada, you can combine countries in it, that look most like the people who have visited this page. So intuitively, you just think, well, 1% is gonna perform better than a 3% or a 4% or a 5% audience. But actually, in many cases, it doesn't. So make sure and set that you're testing up your, you know, kind of your different 
different audiences and making sure that you're getting some you know kind of good metrics back and that you make your decisions based on that okay so um, point number three so use ad sets so use your ad sets properly in order to test your audiences you know, a lot of times when, when I go into to an ad account and I'm looking at maybe asked to come in and, and to um, look at an ad account that's underperforming, a lot of times what I'll see is there'll be multiple interests and behaviors and lookalike audiences all mixed into one kind of, you know, audience or one ad set. Now, essentially what that means is, you know, you don't really know which audience is working, which audience isn't working, and which audience, if you're finding, you should put more budget into, which one you should reduce. So you always want to split out the likes of your, say, your demographics, your interests and behaviors, as well as your t retargeting and lookalike audiences into separate ad sets. Um, so you, and look, you, initially you're gonna have to control how many ad sets you have. Um, so because you, you, you okay so a lot of people that i'm talking to were probably you're going to be starting out and um, you might not necessarily have huge experience and as a result your budgets might be lower and what i mean by lower budget is probably you know under something like 250 500 dollars a day when you're at that level you don't want to have too many ad sets because each one of your ad sets has to exit learning individually and in order to do that, they need to get 50 of the conversion events that you set. Now, whether or not you are, you know, even if it's, okay, page visits is an easy hurdle to get over, but let's say if you have five, six ad sets and each one of those ad sets have to get 50 conversions each week, that means 250 conversions in that week. Now that's fine on bigger budgets, but let's say if it's costing you $5 per conversion, now we can see, that's 1,250, which is, I don't know what that is, so that's you know $150 a day. So you can see that unless you're getting at that level that you want to keep the number of ad sets that you use to a manageable level. So what I normally do is I start off with two to three ad sets, probably ideally three ad sets with three ads in each. Um, and then what you do is you pick your, so you, you pick out the winners and based on the winners, then if you have additional audiences that you want to test, you bring it in once you drop one of the other audiences out and then you test. And then, you know, eventually you, you always want to give an audience, once you've created or targeting, you know, kind of ads at an audience, you do want to give it that kind of five to seven days to settle down and really find itself. So I always say that you want to give it three days after a significant change, but I think in order to give an audience a chance, you nearly have to give them that five to seven days to figure out if, if the audience is working or not. And remember, as you go through this process and you refine your ads on different audiences and you're going through a continual process, like I've already suggested in the earlier videos in this series of refining your ad copy, refining your um, you know, your opt-in page and your, your, your funnel. Now what you want to do is you want to then retest some of the audience with the refined ads and the refined funnel because it could have been that your messaging was just off. And on that, remember that your audience messaging match is hugely important. And what I mean by that is, you know, up above I was talking about behavior. So what you might do is you might take a behavior of, um, you know, let's say if we were targeting for Facebook ad managers, we might go and one of my target audiences could be you know people who've identified themselves as small business owners because that's definitely one you know avatar in my group but then i could target on a behavior level i could target people who are facebook page admins uh, as a different one now ultimately my ads will be very very similar um, and you don't want to change the overall messaging of the ads but I could change, slight change the approach or the wording within the ad to better fit those two people. Because one of the key metrics um, you know, will, will tell you about your audience um, and message match is your, your CPM. So if you're getting a really, really high CPM, it means that the message for your audience is off or you know obviously the messaging in your in in your ad could be wrong either as in you know the messaging in your ad could be not breaking one of facebook's policies but pushing a policy to a limit so uh, you know a point where facebook is happy to let it go ahead but it mightn't be necessarily creating the best experience for the, the facebook user that you're advertising towards but one of the ways that you can spot um if your 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 uh, your audience message match 
matches off is if your CPM is getting really, really high. Um, so, and despite audience expansion and detail targeting expansion at now is mandatory, this is an absolute essential when it comes to, to, to your advertising. Make sure that you're testing your audiences and that you test them properly and that each one is in a separate ad set and that for each one of the ad sets then that you, you know, record which audience it was and what results that you got. Okay, so the next factor here is, well, when, you know, when people are starting off, um, there's a choice and you get a choice between do you go with campaign budget optimization or do you go with ad set budget optimization. Now, always when you are starting, either starting out with a new campaign or starting out with new creatives, I would always start in ad set budget optimization. So if you like, you, you take, you, there's your campaign, you know, at the top that you set your objectives in, and then beneath that, you have your ad sets. And basically what the ad set budget optimization is, lets you set an individual budget for each one of your ad sets. Now what this does is it gives you far much more control over your spend per audience, over you know, kind of managing of separating out the audiences. And this is where, you know, this is going to give you a really, really good indicator of what audiences are working best for you. Um, but one of the things that we need to watch is that each one of those ad sets now needs to op exit learning um, in its own right, which, you know, we've got this now budget versus conversions and learning pay phase um, that we have to manage. So you don't want to have too many ad sets um, in, your, in, your, um, in your campaign. But I normally, that's again, going back to the point I made a little bit earlier on, I normally start off with two to three ad sets with a minimum of three ads per ad set. And obviously those ads can be the exact same or largely the same, even if you're just tweaking you know, some small parts of the copy um, to suit the audience a little bit better. Um, so then you go through, you've got your three ad sets um, up and running, you're testing, honing, refining, you know, you find out the, the audiences that are doing best, you refine your copy, your, you know, your, your images, your videos, and now you've got a, an ad that are ads that are converting. Now at this stage, that's the point when you want to get to scale. And this is now when you move to your campaign budget optimization, because what campaign budget optimization does is it hands more power back to Facebook to make the decisions. You don't necessarily want that early in play because you want to test, specifically test creative and make sure that, you know, the one that's converting best and producing the best results for you, as in, you know, are the people who are opting in the best and, and further down the, the funnel. Um, but ad set budget does not scale well. Um, you know, you see a severe decline in performance as you know, kind of the the uh, the audiences are saturated. Um, but when you move to CBO, one of the big things, so campaign budget optimization, one of the big things is you need bigger audiences. So. Once you're able to exit the learning phase, you know, you could split your, and, and it's it's strange when you get to CBO that, you know, largely what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually put the exact same ads in each of the ad sets. And even initially, you're gonna target the same audiences in each of the ad sets. So maybe you're gonna put across four, you make super big audiences, and then you put the same ad sets into, the same audiences into each one of the ad sets. Because what Facebook is gonna do is it's gonna go off and go into different pockets of those audiences and try to get the ads to convert. And what you'll see is over time, you'll see who the winners and losers are. And then once you get out of your, your learning phase, now you've got like, you know, a couple of different strategies you can do. So one strategy would be to have an ad set with, you know, your all your audiences, the original one working well um, and, and let that scale. And then go with this other super broad one where basically all you're doing is you're picking the demographic uh, age and you're picking the, the location. Or what you could do is put in one with like, you know, 1% lookalike audience, the 2% lookalike audience, 3%, 4%, 5% lookalike audience. And that you are, so it gives you plenty of options then in terms of scaling. Because the more finite that you make your audience, 
the higher your CPM will be. And that's, you know, the, the cost per thousand impressions will be. So this, by making it super broad and moving the budget to the top uh, uh, and to the campaign level, you're giving Facebook much more control. So look, at, like realistically, budgets under about $500 a day don't perform well as, you know, campaign budget optimized as multiple ad set budget optimized. But once you get over that, campaign budget optimization is definitely the, the way to go. Um, so then we come back, let's say we're starting off with our ad set budget optimization. And um, so this is you know, kind of point five in our, our kind of the, the five hacks is you start off and maybe you start off on a budget of $50, right? Just to test, right, per day. And you're testing some ads and things are working out for you. And now suddenly you wanna go and you wanna scale that. So you bump your 50 to $200 and next thing the ad collapses. <laughs> um, and people are always amazed, oh well, you know, it was working really well and then I did this and it disappeared. And I said, that's just the way ad set, you know, when you're scaling ad set, it works. And the, the I, I suppose the scaling metric that you want to use is, you can only scale by 20% of budget every 72 hours. So if you're starting off on uh, $50 and you've run $50 for the first while, now you can only go to uh, $60 in the next step. If you go over that, you're likely to reset learning. Um, so let's say if you're on $100, well then you can go from 100 to 120, then from 120 to 144, then from 100 and, and so on every two, 72 hours. Now, most people, if they get ads that are working, they're really, really uncomfortable with moving at that slow a pace. Or for most people in my audience, I'm talking to people who are probably coming into launches or you know they've got some big promotion on and they want to scale that. Um, so this is not ideal. Well, there are a couple of ways around it. The first thing is there's two real approaches to scaling. The first is vertical scaling, which what we've been talking about, and that's adding you know more cash up. Whereas the other one is horizontal scaling. So one of the options that you have, if you have your ad set budget up to, uh, ads, if you have your uh, ad sets in place, is to scale horizontally with different audiences. One of the ways you could do that is through lookalike audiences. So if you have a lookalike of, you know, kind of visitors to a thank you page or a lookalike of visitors to the opt-in page itself, depending on how long the campaign has been running and what level, you know, those audiences are at. And um, so if you have 1% of the thank you page, what you could do is you could create another ad set. Um, so duplicate the existing ad set and add in, uh, you know, kind of maybe the, the two to five percent, um, so one to two percent audience, and put that maybe at one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. Then duplicate the ad set again and put in another audience, which is the like the two, the two to five percent audience. Now we could put more money into that, or we could just go higher, much higher on on those individual ad sets. So now uh, the other way that we could do is um, either your lookalikes or you could bring in additional interests. Obviously bringing in additional interests is, is tougher because the audience mightn't necessarily respond in the same way. So normally the way I like doing that is to, um, normally the way I like doing that is to bring in lookalikes. Then we've got vertical hacks. Now the other thing that you can do is, and this sounds a, a, you know, a little bit odd, but just duplicate the ad set and put whatever budget you want into it and let the two ad sets compete against the same audience. Now this does sound counterintuitive and a lot of people worry about well, oh, if I'm competing against myself will I not push up my, my overall spend. What you have to realize is you're competing with hundreds of thousands of other advertisers who are targeting your audience. So your little you know, kind of increase in budget is not going to do anything in the overall CPM. One thing that you do want to watch is you're probably, you could get some duplicate results where by people who are in the same audience, if they see you know, kind of the ad in two audiences and then they go in to opt in in one of the audience, they're probably going to get counted as opting in in the other audience as well. So you do want to duplicate your results, but remember what I said at the start of this, you need to have independent verification and you need to have, you know, a second way of calculating your, you, obviously you're taking your ad spend from Facebook, but a second way of calculating, you know, your, your cost per, cost per lead, cost per acquisition further down the stream. Now, if you are superstitious about that, I know what some people recommend is you can duplicate the, you can duplicate the ad set. 
with the exact audience, but maybe just change the demographics slightly, as in, you know, change if your age range was from 25 to, to 65, you might change the age range from 26 to 65. And then it doesn't look to Facebook like it's the exact same audience. Um, so that's point five on scaling your ad budget, um, your ad set budget. Now point number six um, is one that, you know, a huge number of people have fallen foul of. And that is that you never ever kill the golden goose. Um, if you have an ad or an ad set that is performing, never make any changes to that ad or to that ad set. If an ad is going really well, you know, I remember I, w I was working on a campaign, we'd worked hard on this campaign, everything was going great. And um, we had one problem on the account and, and I, I actually asked, specifically asked the Facebook rep, you know, about making some changes to conversion events. And the Facebook rep, rep said, oh no, that no problem whatsoever, that won't have any, any impact. And um, so there and then on the call with them, I just made the change to, to the conversion event and our ad crashed. And this was an ad that we had literally, we had taken from, you know, when, when, I, when I looked into the account initially, their cost per lead was coming in at something like $20. We'd gotten it right down to, I think it was about 450. Things were going absolutely great. The ad died. So when, I, when the conversion event changed, the ad died. And no matter what we did, we couldn't get that ad to perform at the same level. Um, so we had to go back to the drawing board. We had to, you know, come up with new creative, new copy, new everything else, get back out. And thankfully, we, we outdid that um, eventually. Um, but it was still, these, these things happen. So you always want to make sure that you duplicate your ad into a new ad set um, or even into a new campaign if, you know, switch, if you're switching over um, you know, kind of events and make the changes to the duplicate. So this anything you know outside of your 20% budget increases, anything got to do with changing images, videos, headline, body, copy, or audience changes. And here's the thing, you know, at a certain stage, normally when people are optimizing their ads, normally what they're doing is they are you know cutting their losers and bringing in new ads um, based on what their worst ad performance is, but. Never forget that a really good way to uh, approach to optimizing is to improve your best performer as well. But never ever, so you know, kind of me never ever make changes to the ad or the ad set because that's going to drive the ad back into learning and it may not come back out learning in the same way. Um, so yes, this might, you know, this might cause some untidiness in campaign and possibly some headaches from a budgeting perspective, trying to match up the budgets and, and you know, kind of get everything working, but it protects your cost per lead or your CPA until you have other ads um, that, can, that can really that can beat it. Okay, so today we've looked at what's working now, um, you know, uh, it, almost a, a report from the trenches. So thank you for joining me today and indeed for following along with the entire series. And wherever you're looking at this, please like, share this video, make sure to subscribe and like the channel or account for lots more content like this. And even more importantly, please do scroll down, leave me a comment. I promise I reply to each and every one personally. Look, I, I know that this can be frustrating, so let me know what challenges you face with your Facebook ads, whether you're just getting started, you're, you're a seasoned pro looking to scale your ad campaigns. You know, sometimes all we need is a bit of encouragement and to know we're not battling it out on our own. So whatever you're facing today, you got this, we're here for you. Thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you again real soon.